Coffee, synonymous with good mornings the world over. A kickstart to millions of office goers. An everyday pick-me-up for millions of workers. Renowned for its social properties, cafes are quintessential soulful hotspots. A place where quiet little dreams whisper in conversation. A place for bonding, a place for quiet reflection. Truth be told, I love coffee. But first off, let me tell you something interesting about the title. The reason they call it Coffee Connoisseur is because I am not. In fact, I'm as lost as you are when it comes to all these varied choices. So come with me on a journey where we learn everything about coffee so that I can justify the title and call myself a coffee connoisseur. Well, if nothing, at least I'll know what exactly goes into my preferred cup of coffee and know what to order. answers these days, the internet. And from what I've read, there's a very interesting start to this story. Well, this is a coincidence. I'm surrounded by goats and the origins of coffee lie in this story when some herders noticed their goats that got completely energized after eating the coffee berry. And the rest, like they say, is history. My journey in becoming a connoisseur cannot commence without a visit to Baba Budangiri. Located about 250 kilometers from Bangalore, nestled in the heart of the Western Ghats, lies the foundation of coffee in India. Legend has it that the Saint Baba Budan hid seven magical coffee beans in his robes and brought them here from Yemen in the 1600s. The entirety of Indian coffee is said to be from these seven magical beans. I almost felt his presence here. At over 1500 meters, this here is Baba Budangiri. And the patron saint who brought coffee to India is said to have meditated right here. This is such a beautiful place that I really wouldn't mind meditating here. But did you know that this right here is the birthplace of coffee in India? All the history in all the cups of your coffee has its roots right here. Who knew that those seven magical beans someday would help India produce over 320,000 metric tons of coffee, which would then generate over 1 billion US dollars as revenue. Since its origin, coffee is widely grown all across the Chikmagalur district, which is known for its Arabica variety. Coffee plantations spread far and wide from here, and coffee is now an integral part of culture and tradition across the landscape. This is probably reflected best in the district of Goragu, just south of here. As far as the eye can see, lie vast coffee estates. Rich in history and tradition, coffee is now an integral part of the daily lives of millions of Indians today. And it is formative of culture as well, as it is most evident in the picturesque locales of Kurg, or as it is officially called, Kodagu. Good. This 
guest here is Roshan Sumaya and he's a lucky, lucky man because he's the manager of this stunning coffee estate and I believe you're going to teach me a thing or two about coffee. Sure, definitely. And it's good that you come in now because right now we come in the crop picking season. Okay. So we start picking and then you move into the harvesting and the processing. Wonderful. So I get to learn a lot. We should be on our way. Yeah. Please. Coffee is a crop which would take about nine months. Okay. It moves from green to cherry red right. to a little more darker. Right. You right. need to pick it at the right stage, a concept known as selective picking. Okay. And that's when you get the best quality. Okay. And you're saying that all the coffee here in India is plucked by hand, it's done by people? Oh, definitely, yes. Yeah? Most so likely every bit of coffee that is drunk in the country is hand-picked. Well, that's really fascinating to know. It makes it that much more special. Would it be possible for me to see how one of these people do it? Oh, definitely, yeah? yes. Her hands are moving so fast. Uh, how much do you think in a day a, a particular picker picks? In Robusta, some of them would pick between 150 to 300. And she's a very good picker. She goes up to 400 on particular days. When you say 150 to 300, you mean kilos? Kilos, yes. And you see how nimble her fingers are. They'll be able to pick off just the ripe. In case one or two stray green comes in, they're able to separate it off. That's fantastic. That's yes. really quick yeah. and that's a lot. Yeah, that speaks a lot for the skills yeah. of the worker. Absolutely. I don't know if I'd be able to do any of this. I mean, maybe a kilo or two kilos a day. Give it a try. You just get your hands in a bunch okay. and just twist the cluster off, it'll come into your hands, yeah. Whoa! So clearly the pickers make it look easier than it actually is. A uh, highly skilled job. Yes, it is. How many coffee lovers can lay their hands on coffee beans like me? I guess this makes me very lucky. One more bunch and I think I'm going to leave the job to the pickers. Yeah, okay. Yeah? All right. Come. Do you see a lot of birds around here? Oh yeah, yeah? you should. Actually, you could hear them now. Uh-huh. Oh, if you look over there, I think that's a hornbill. Yeah, it is. If you look to the left, the branch. Oh, there it is. It's huge. Yeah, that's a big hornbill. Somewhere inside me, I can feel that I'm destined for this journey. Riding through these serene estates is having a very soothing effect on my mind. So, Roshan, uh, you're Kodava yourself. Yes. And that means that your life is more intertwined with coffee than I earlier imagined. Yeah, for the people of Ku, coffee is kind of a way of life. Okay. But now it's kind of becoming a business. Right, right. Now tell me something, when you pick the cherries off uh, the plant and then you sun dry them, what is the next part of the process? So once you pick the coffee, there are two processes. Either you pulp them, that's when you remove the fruit skin and then dry it further to parchment, which you can see over here. Or you dry it with the skin and that is called cherry. It is difficult for a coffee lover to believe that these simple coffee beans go through such an elaborate process. The beautiful estates and the smell of freshly brewed coffee is truly an intoxicating combination. Thank you. Mm. It's got a very distinct flavor. It's Unlike anything I've ever tried before. Yeah. It's distinct because of uh, the way it is grown. It's not a blend. Okay. And this is what we call single origin coffees. And the distinct flavor is because of the conditions under which it is grown. It's grown under sustainable environmental conditions. Mm -hmm. And if you can look around, it's grown under shade. Right. And then you have pepper and oranges. Yeah. And we use a mix of tradition as well as uh, modern techniques. Our traditional coffee practices make for a healthy environment. Another point to note, Indian coffee is completely grown under the shade. It provides shelter for birds and insects that keep other pests away from coffee beans.
It's starting to drizzle and I'm sure it's going to start pouring very, very soon. The magnificent monsoon winds, laden with moisture, cause the coffee beans to swell in size, change color, and acquire an intense yet mellow flavor that connoisseurs love. This is known as monsoon Malabar coffee. Though discovered by accident when coffee beans were being transported to Europe, monsooning is now purposefully recreated to give the beans this mellow, intense flavor and, of course, to reduce the acidity. The next step after the coffee leaves the estate is milling. So I'm with Mr. Madhya, who is the general manager of Tata Coffee Kushal Nagar, which is basically a curing, grinding and roasting unit. So I'm very keen to know what happens to the coffee after it leaves the estates and comes here. Once the coffee leaves the estate after it is dried there, depending on the requirement of the coffee in the market, the coffee goes to the mill for de-husking and grading. Once the milling and all that operations are completed, it comes for the final touches, okay. where the women sitting here will do a hand picking to remove whatever defects is left after the machine operation. So they have to have a very fine eye that's when right. they're doing that's, this. That's right. And they are all, over a period of time, all these women you see here are put in more than 15 years of service. Right. Uh, this is the final operation where the final human touch is wherever it is required. Okay. Because all this coffee, most of it gets exported. That's right. the reason that this operation is being carried out. It is that section of, of the coffee process where it, it's brought to perfection. The processes at the mill help determine the quality of the coffee and set the standards. However, there are numerous factors that affect the final outcome. And the authority on this matters is the CCRI, or the Central Coffee Research Institute. Set up in 1925, it is one of the earliest institutions set up in the country. Many a scientists spend their entire life on bettering the coffee process through CCRI. Their role is something like that of a mentor to discover newer, better processes to help coffee production. Hello. Hello. Hi. Don't let me disturb you. Carry on with your work. So this is, a, this is a group of researchers that are currently working with a portable photosynthetic machine. And what this machine does is it basically measures the photosynthetic activities of a plant. And the reason they're doing this right now is because there are certain plants that work best under duress and stress and various other conditions. So they're trying to figure out which plant variety that might be. Now that I have a fair idea of the journey of coffee from bean to cup, it is time to get some coffee into my system. For that, the tasting unit of the coffee board in Bangalore should be my next destination. It is here that the concoction that makes your cup of coffee comes together with expert taste buds that decide exactly what hint of which flavor goes in, bringing together different varieties of coffee to form a well-rounded, holistic blend is as much art as it is science. I'm going to go and speak with Mr. Besfaraj, who is an expert coffee taster, and get some insight on this. Mr. Besfaraj? Hello. Hi, I'm Julie. How are you? Very good, how are you? I'm fine. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Yes, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Besaraj, I just know that I like coffee, but aside from that, I don't know more about it. So, could you just tell me how do I discern good coffee from bad coffee? There are two types of coffee in India we are growing. One is Robusta okay. and one is Arabica. You can see this is an Arabica bean and that is a Robusta bean. Okay. Arabicas are softer, aromatic, flavorful. Right. The Robusta beans are stronger coffees. This we can distinguish by tasting. So, will I, as a layperson, also be able to figure out the taste immediately? Quality judging and other things, it takes time. Okay. As a layman, just you can taste and say that it's a good coffee or a bad coffee based on the quality. 
Okay, so uh, do you think there's a process that I could go through right now? No, we will prepare some coffees and you can taste. Okay, so perfect. We'll go All right, let's do yes. that. So this is ground coffee? Yeah, this is the ground coffee. Okay. These are the beans and we have to grind the coffee and then make it ground. 10 grams we have to take. Okay. And then we have to smell. You can smell this coffee. Okay. Very nice aromatic. Very it's strong. a chocolatey and floral fragrances are there. Mm -hmm. So after that, we have to pour water in these uh, tumblers and we have to allow for seven minutes for brewing. So seven minutes is the stipulated yeah, time? Yeah, seven minutes for brewing. And then we have to smell and then taste. That is the procedure. I'm noticing how you filled it right to the top yeah, exactly and not a drop is yes. going to budge from its place. Yeah. I cannot wait to try out my newly gained coffee knowledge. This is also a time to check if I'm on the right track to becoming a coffee connoisseur. Okay, sir, so should we start the tasting process? Yes, we can start tasting. Okay. I will show you how to taste the coffee. We are taking a sip of coffee like this. Like this. Sorry, but why did you slurp it like that? So I am taking the brew with air and atomizing to know the flavor of coffee. So once we are atomizing the coffee, then we are spraying the brew to the upper palate where our nostrils are there, they are sensing the flavor. But is that, does that come with practice or can I just do it? No, you can do it, you just taste this coffee and uh, see. Okay, let me try. And you have to make sound a little bit. So uh, it's not considered bad manners? Yeah, it's not considered bad manners. Okay, so I uh, take this, it's not too hot, right? Yeah, you like can this? spit it here itself. Okay, and then like yeah, that, yeah. yeah? Okay, here goes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we always obviously spit it out, otherwise we'll be high on coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah on coffee. That's oh. the thing, you have to spit it out. And we are tasting so many samples like this uh, in a day. So can I try another one? Yeah, you can try another one. This Mysore okay. nuggets. Because huh? I really nice like it. It's, it's... Yeah. You have to make sound. I didn't make a sound. It wasn't as loud as yours though. Yeah. Expert, non-expert. Clearly, yeah. This yeah. is how you have to make sound. I really like this. It's a Mysore nugget. Yeah. It's a very nice flavor. It's a India specialty coffee, Arabica specialty coffee. Okay. And we are also having one more coffee there. It is an Araku coffee. That is the winner of this year's award, the national award, flavor of India, best Arabica award. So it the won. best Arabica right now is the Araku coffee. Araku coffee. Thank you very much you. for letting me in on your secrets. Thank you. Now that I know a little about the quality of coffee and surprisingly learned that coffee grown in Araku Valley was awarded as the best coffee of this year, I figured I won't do justice to my coffee journey without visiting Araku Valley. The story of coffee in Araku Valley is really a story of hope and positive change that is rare and unique. Once upon a time, the tribals of the area relied on an age-old practice of shift and burn cultivation. They used to cut down the forest to grow whatever they needed to, and pretty soon the landscape was becoming a dreary sight. Now thanks to coffee cultivation, the tribals have given up their shift and burn practices, thereby saving the remaining forest, while also providing extensive green cover through the shade trees for coffee. As coffee has brought change and prosperity to Aragu Valley, the tribals still proudly hold on to their traditions. Looks like I have arrived at the right time in the hamlets. Shaking a leg with these amazing people is probably one of the best moments of this journey. What started out as a humble little canteen on the railway station of Aruku Valley has now blossomed into a lifeline for the locals and also as a true tribute to a culture that is coffee. The modern solution was to provide a platform to sell coffee grown by the tribes with a unique coffee shop as well as a museum. The coffee shop, 
roasts and grinds fresh coffee for discerning tourists and helps people like me taste various kinds of coffees produced. India has a variety of 13 different coffees. This then leads to limitless blends that can be achieved with them, thus making Indian coffee that much more unique. The coffee plantations in the south are the cradle of Indian coffee. The eastern Ghats and the northeastern states are newly developed areas of coffee. The Indian coffee grower pours his life into the crop. Is it any wonder then that India has consistently produced and exported a remarkable variety of high quality coffees for over 150 years? I have covered but a few stops on our exploration of Indian coffee. A connoisseur's journey can last a lifetime. I'm back at the coffee shop where I started in Bangalore, where I've spent many, many hours daydreaming about the right cup of coffee. There is coffee literally from all parts of the world. And now that I'm a bit of a connoisseur myself, I would have to say that my personal favorite are the Mysore nuggets. Now this is a Bittersweet Symphony from Baba Budangari, which is where our journey started. And like they say, life does come a full circle. Now this is a really proud moment for me because for the first time, I know exactly what to order for myself. Coffees go best with conversation. Somewhere inside, it touches the soul. Somewhere in the hurry of today's merry-go-round world, a sip is like stopping to smell the flowers. Subtle beauty, a hint of the earth, aromatic tones that make for one of those finer everyday moments. The more you know, with every sip you realize, life is beautiful with a cup of coffee.